is about Storybook, USWDS, and Atomic Design. Also, of course, I uh, mentioned Drupal in with this. Uh, just introduce ourselves. Uh, my name is Bill Rank. Uh, this is Arsen Yusinov. Uh, we work for Web First. I've been um, doing Drupal for about close to 20 years now, um, 25 plus in overall web development, uh, 15 years. For Arson, um, as I mentioned, web first, we want a uh, medium revenue, small, uh, sorry, from the CCAP, CCAP, CCAP award is a, is a government contractor of the year. Um, and we are also one of the sponsors. So I wanted to take a minute to thank everybody that's uh, sponsored these talks, provided lunch, all the good stuff. All right, as I mentioned, we're going to be talking about um, <clears throat> Storybook. Uh, we're going to start off with some Drupal theming, um, define some key terms, um, also touch on USWDS, atomic design, and then the implementation of these things. All right, so this is just kind of a, an overview slide, conceptually, how everything is going to fit together. Um, on the outer edge there, you have a design system. And then the inner core is uh, basically like the front end of the site, the client branding. Um, so we're going to talk about how we engineer uh, that, the client branding, into, um, into like a Drupal site or not even a Drupal site, but um, just doing that in an engineered way. Um, just uh, go over a couple key concepts here. Uh, one is a style guide. Um, that's kind of easier than two. Um, it's just a visual reference. Uh, it defines things like font size, colors, and if you have a big one, you can call it a style manual if there's enough uh, substance to it. And then there's the design system, which can include the style guide, but includes other things like components and pattern libraries, and that's really the, the core thing of, of what we're going to be talking about here. Hi, everyone. Yeah, so let's uh, start from the uh, reviewing the native Drupal theming and what cons and pros it has. And let's begin from the benefits. First is the robust backend integration and uh, native Drupal theming offering uh, seamless integration with Drupal backend and shows that uh, the team works smooth and uh, Drupal for already have it, so it works out of the box. Uh, second is the direct integration. So by using the Drupal native theming, we get the benefits uh, and direct access to the features like views, logs, layouts, builder, and all other things what uh, Drupal have, and it's not require any extra work for integration, let's say. Is required just CSS on top of it and some preprocessing as well, uh, but it's already working. And uh, this is just few benefits what Drupal native teaming is gives us. But let's review and see what the consideration uh, this way from implementation it have as well. So first is backend dependency, and uh, when we're speaking about the backend dependency, it means that the front-end teaming itself can happen uh, before the backend will be ready. So we should prepare backend first, at least like create some entity types, content types, etc. Uh, after it's the complexity of the work, what should happen? Uh, the preprocessing layer and overall the teaming uh, can be complex and difficult to manage especially uh, for the beginners or for the large projects. And uh, this also requires a Drupal knowledge from the front-end uh, developer who will going to work on it. So it's like the person who will going to build the team and work on it should know at least something about the Drupal uh, and how everything works in the Drupal. Uh, also, is the customization challenges. Uh, it, the Drupal gives us a lot out of box, but at the same time, is uh, kind of sometimes will be simpler to create something from the scratch 
than preprocess and alter something, as we know. Uh, and last but not least is the maintenance. Once we build the team by using the native Drupal teaming, uh, it's not always very simple to maintain and it requires a lot of uh, time and uh, developers work in the end. Uh, so we can see that sometimes native teaming can uh, give us the benefits and uh, simplify the process, but it also have a lot of cons and like we should try to research and see what else we have. So and uh, let's review one of alternative non-Drupal way of building the front end uh, that help us to build and team uh, all the components and features what we have. Uh, it's the storybook. So what is the storybook? I'm sure that like most of us already uh, know about it. And this is a tool for component playground uh, what helps us to uh, visualize the components. It also document hub and prototyping environment uh, where we can run some tests, uh, review the design in live mode. Uh, so it allows us to develop and document UI component in isolation. Uh, it creates a visual library of the component that uh, can be tested and uh, it can be tested with different uh, tools, even like the accessibility testing can be run as well. Uh, it also enhances the component reusability, so stimulus to development process and simplifying the collaboration between team members and designers as well. And like for government projects, we should follow the United States web design system standards. So uh, we just talked about the design system before and hopefully everyone already familiar with USWDS. Uh, Storybook gives us more modern way to build our front-end components and uh, pages, a whole template. So our design system will be more consistent and accessible, will be meeting the federal standards while we're using the USWDS. Uh, this will be the modular approach, what allows us uh, easier maintain and scale our project in future. Uh, the collaboration between the team and te teams and team members, uh, and overall in whole project and, and development process, will be more efficient as well. And at the same time, uh, by using the storybook, we already. React ready, <laughs> so uh, like we can build any decoupled, progressive decoupled, headless projects as well. And uh, yeah, so how we can integrate the US WDS into the storybook? Uh, there, there is exist like a uh, few ways to do this. Uh, and like one of the way it's the okay so one of the way is the using the USWDS as a node package first of all is straightforward and fast just one command and uh, we will have it integrated already. It's easier to update to latest versions. Uh, like 
We also can uh, very simple extend from existing components in USWGS and create our own components uh, based on it. And let's see as well what benefits the storybook and USWGS in general gives us. Uh, so first is the component isolation. Storybook allows developers to build and test the UI components in isolation from the main application. Uh, this ensures that each component uh, developed independent and reducing the risk in, and, and conflicts in future uh, and gives us ability to, to debug easier as well. Uh, this also improving the documentation process because the storybook automatically generates a visual document, documentation uh, for the UI components. So, uh, consistent development workflow, uh, because we are using the storybook, it promotes, pr promotes uh, a cons consistent workflow for us as for developers and uh, it encourages the best practices as well. So, uh, we can write the stories for each a component and we can see this component in the list and, and organize the code base, etc. And the same time, as I mentioned before, uh, it gives us integration with the testing tool. So uh, we already can run the test with various test tools and also include the automated testing as well like visual regression tests for each of the front-end component. Uh, the same time, we can play around with uh, like content, what we are going to have on the front-end, and see how like short text, long text, uh, different images with different uh, uh, ratio will work in the component itself. Okay, so uh, one of another benefits by using the storybook is the independent team works. So uh, the component can be built without the backend. Uh, we use just the mock data. Uh, because of this, we can work already independent, like front end team, back end team. Front end team shouldn't wait for. Uh, backend folks to build something and, and after start testing it and styling it. Uh, this will provide better teamwork and uh, increase the velocity and whole development process as well. Uh, so accessibility, as I mentioned before, is also very important in government projects. So we can run a lot of accessibility tests and uh, build whole page or like list of the pages with use different components together and run uh, something like Lighthouse uh, to see how it works together. Okay, so Storybook is good and uh, just by using Storybook it already gives us a lot of features, flexibility, and benefits. Uh, but we always trying to see what else we have, like what other approaches we have, and how we can uh, simplify our life. And like, let's remember one another. Uh, still, actual and great component library, which is called Pattern Lab, and. I think we will, will describe us. Give you a break here for a second. Um, just a show of hands, or how many people are familiar with Pattern Lab? That's pretty good. Is there anybody in here that's not familiar with USWDS? Just a couple people. I mean, um, so just you know, the the brief sort of synopsis is it's the the design system for the United States government that you know most of the federal sites are trying to adhere to at this point. 
Um, so Pattern Lab, that's, I kind of think of that as like the precursor to Storybook, um, created in 2013 by Brad Frost. Uh, so it's like a, as a back-end developer, I, I look at it as like this is sort of this thing outside of Drupal, as, as a Drupal developer, that we kind of implement our design in, and then um, we use that to uh, have those things independently, and then actually like apply them to our Drupal theme, and, it, and these things can exist independently, they don't have to be used in Drupal, um, and as Arsene was saying, can build, view, and test these things in a UI you know, just independently, but no matter what sort of app that you're doing. Okay, so I think because a lot of us are already familiar and using the Pattern Lab, uh, also familiar with the Atomic Design as well, and uh, what is the atomic design? So it's, uh, it is a comprehensive framework for building and maintaining a powerful design system. Also, atomic design enables a faster development, higher quality, and more consistent uh, user interface. Uh, this approach encourages viewing the UI as structure and in hierarchy outlines the characteristic of the pattern library and offers a strategies to enhance collaboration with uh, development and design team. So this improves our development process in general. Okay, so, and we have a question like, science atomic design was burned already about like 11 years ago. Uh, does it still make sense? Uh, I think this way of implementation uh, was even before and was applied not only in web development, but in 2013, we got this name by Atomic Design. If we think about uh, any application, website, and so on, like each of these have small components after like a bit bigger, and we can build these bigger components with you reusing the small. So. This answers on our question that yes, it's still a leaf and still makes sense. Okay, let's review uh, the atomic design patterns and what is the <coughs> atom itself. The atom is the smallest component. Uh, usually we can see the atoms in uh, such as components like links, buttons, inputs, paragraphs, etc. And after goes molecules. The molecules is combination of the atoms. And for example, we can see the molecules when we building our navigation system or like lists or input of the uh, gr group of the inputs, etc. So after goes the Organisms. The organism, again, uh, is the larger than atom and molecules. Uh, this is a combination of molecules and atoms together. And organisms uh, can be built and we can see them in components like call to action, when we're building like footer header, each of these separate component is organism. And after in atomic design pattern goes like templates. And templates are like typically it's the layout of the patterns uh, that we can find uh, system wide. For example, it can be uh, article, 
page or blog post. Uh, we will have a like, template of the product, etc. And the pages. So the page is the highest level of the in the atomic design methodology. Uh, and what is the biggest difference between the templates and the pages is that the pages already contain the content. So it can be like mock data or real data content. Okay. So the why we should care in general about the atomic design. Because uh, atomic design, this is component driven, driven development, uh, design, sorry. Uh, it's reduced always cost and challenges and makes uh, our projects more maintainable and consistent. Uh, so, because we can reuse the components and by doing this we minimizing our work and we're already following some standards. Uh, by doing this, we already can be sure that overall everything will be uh, c consistent. And in the future, it will be also very much, much simpler to maintain because uh, of reusability. So when we, for example, are using one button across all the project, like uh, in case if we need just update the color for it or like something or text itself, we can just uh, update it in one place and this will affect on all other pages where we are using it. And yeah, as we mentioned before, uh, the benefits of using the atomic design pattern we can break down a component into a basic elements, into atoms, uh, and this will be uh, more easier to uh, understand, maintain, and also can be combined together uh, for large components. Uh, this also simplified style guide creation with atomic design principles uh, we can like create and build our uh, components in a very consistent way across whole platform and uh, like it's much easier to follow some standard the same way it's like uh, much readable code, easier to read and maintain uh, compared to traditional methodologies. And uh, this gives us ability to accelerate prototype and update like in futures. So, <coughs> okay, let's review how the storybook will look like when we will follow the atomic design pattern and build our components with use, with use atomic design. As we can see here, like uh, right from the top to the bottom, like we beginning from the smallest, which is atom, and following to molecules, organisms, templates, and pages. Uh, sometimes, especially when we're building the progressive decoupled or decoupled projects, uh, we do have needs to have some not visual components, let's say uh, title tag or some extra like JavaScript, etc. What not required to will have the visual uh, component itself, but we still need it. So, and in these cases, we can use something like utilities or particles and put those into like particles, for example. Okay, so uh, 
And when we start thinking about how we're going to integrate the front end and back end and uh, connect all the things together, uh, we already have very great module which is called components. This really simplify our lives and uh, this offers a uh, easier way to manage and access to our design elements. It's enabling more efficient, uh, maintainable front-end architecture as well. As, and also, as you can see from the slide, like we uh, can call our like components and uh, uh, map them out. We we'll use the components module. And the storybook was developed and designed uh, to build React components. Uh, it's kind of React component playground and library, but it's not also limiting us to use it when we don't have any React component itself. Uh, we can use, still use it as a pattern lab before and grab some benefits. So when we're using about the React and Drupal, uh, we have two main ways to implement uh, the project. And this is fully decoupled Drupal. So when we decoupling, Drupal will not have the team layer, so we will use the Drupal as a backend only, and uh, this way also called a headless. And second is the progressive decoupled, and progressive decoupled way is when we just balancing between uh, like what is Drupal rendering and what we can render with use the. React components, like or, or even whole pages. Uh, both of these ways uh, can be implemented, and like uh, depends from project needs and requirements. We can choose and use any of it, but when we thinking about like Drupal and speaking about React and Drupal, we try to get from Drupal as much as we can. And in this case, progressive decoupled uh, have a, a bit more benefits uh, because Drupal already can render a lot of things and we can use the React components only in places where it makes sense and where we need some uh, dynamic thing what will work fast and we shouldn't like uh, switch the whole page to react uh, so yeah for integration the react component and Drupal we can utilize uh, another Contrib module, which is called uh, JS component, and uh, this module allows us to manage and render our React components very efficient uh, in Drupal and gives us a more flexible way and integration uh, into our platform. So yeah, this was. Uh, just some basic benefits that uh, Storybook and Atomic Design combined can uh, give us. Okay. Questions? Obviously, a lot of uh, yeah concepts that went <laughs> gone over relatively quickly. So. Uh, any questions or anything you want us to elaborate on? Did you? Yeah. I have a question um, in regards to um, the ICP decoupled versus the code decoupled. 
Yeah, you want to go? Yeah, sure. So, so just repeating this for the recording, the, the question was about uh, elaborating on uh, what, fully decoupled versus progressively decoupled. Okay, so the progressive decoupled versus the fully decoupled is, the progressive decoupled is the way when we still using the Drupal renders and uh, we can build some pages or some components uh, what will be rendered through Drupal. So, and at the same time, on the same page, let's say we still can have the React components and fully decoupled is when we use uh, the React and some uh, something like Gatsby or Netlify, what will uh, render and create this static uh, static content and static data for us, based like and and will fetch the data from the Drupal, for example, when we using the Drupal as our backend. Do you have a public repo, like any working demo? Uh, like, we don't have still public repo because uh, we're using this in our project. So, yeah, maybe in future. Tell me why uh, my storybook is better than the lab or what were some of the improvements? The question is, <laughs> the question is, why is Storybook better than Pattern Lab? I don't know that it's, I, I don't know that it's better necessarily. Like I think, for me, just having like an engineered way of implementing um, the front end is good. So whether you pick one or the other, as long as you're, you're doing something that's you know kind of following standards, getting the benefits that were listed before. Um, but I, I guess Storybook's sort of just the, the more modern take on design systems. Yeah, yeah also, like, Storybook already was designed uh, to build React components, so this is the main benefit. I was just going to add to that that um, Pattern Lab, you're going to have to basically have your templates in two different locations because the ones that you need to use for Pattern Labs are not going to work for Drupal. Storybook allows you to just keep that contained in Storybook and then just reference using the footage of Drupal template and then keep it easier for the design. So it's a lot easier and easier to maintain just maintaining the source of templates for this Yeah, it's like very good call and also you still can do this with use uh, pattern lab as well. But in storybook, it's a bit easier, yeah. I think the other thing is that with the USWDS team, they're using storybook as well, so you're better aligned with that team if you're going to be using similar components. I think you're just updating your, yeah. your theme. Yeah. It's going to be easier. So it, it, add components. It will be much easier, especially yes. because uh, USWDS has been switched and it's already uh, node package, so we, we can integrate it into our system as node package, so yeah, it definitely will be much easier to maintain in future. Have you used the emulsify emulsify Drupal libraries to, to help connect, uh, better connect the storyboard in the rest of the yes and uh, The question was, did we use Emulsify to better connect for better connection between uh, Storybook and Drupal? Uh, no, we didn't. Uh, I used Emulsify before just by itself. Uh, it's a very great tool, let's say. And uh, why we didn't? I think because uh, <coughs> just by its own, the Storybook with uh, USWDS was already plenty for us, so. You guys using 
feet or a pack or what's under the hood probably? Go. Oh. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, sorry, the question was if we use Eager or Webpack or what tool we using to build our team. So we're using Gulp. Did you have another question? Yes, I did. I had two questions. Um, one is about forms and the other one is about suits. Um, what a, a developer was asking how Storybook aligns with So the question was how the storybook uh, works with the forms. Like I can assume that you thinking about Drupal forms like web form, content, uh, contact form, etc. Uh, there is really uh, not a lot of great uh, integrations, let's say. And usually when we building something uh, what contain forms, we trying to use the Drupal render in this way. And uh, if we need to build like already form, what will be more dynamic or, or like uh, will work with third party and etc., it already will be a React component. It depends from the requirements, let's say. But yeah, when we're speaking about web forms, contact forms, like usual Drupal forms, uh, we can just build some wrapper uh, inside of our storybook. We can just build a organism uh, that will wrap just one or two variables. What we will send from our template to the uh, storybook organism component, and uh, like that's it. So the this variable will already contain the form itself. And then the second question was about quick suit. Are you familiar with that? Sorry. Quick suit? Quick suit. Uh, yeah. oh, is anyone familiar with quick suit? Speak. What is it? Quick suit, is that what you said? Yes. Something for <laughs> some additional research. What uh, do you? It, it, it supports storybook um, implementation of their components, but also um, it supports the templating aspect of Twig. That's as far as I know. It's okay. So there's a. <laughs> the comment was about Quick Suit and, and potentially uh, integrating storybook easier with the templating system in Drupal so, for additional research. Anything else? Any other questions? Comments? Wrap up a little bit earlier. Uh, oh, go. Cool. I wasn't sure what um, particles were in that breakdown of atomic design. Uh, it wasn't on this screenshot, yeah. So uh, the question was why particles wasn't just what they are. Ah, uh, what they are. Okay. Uh, so particles or utilities, uh, this is the same thing, and uh, is just another uh, layer in like not atomic design itself, but when we building a React application. So we do have some time. Uh, need to create some uh, not visual component. Let's say we need just uh, some JavaScript, extra JavaScript, what we need to attach to, to, to the components, to multiple components. Some sort of action. Some sort of action, yeah. Or uh, let's say, like the simplest example I think will be uh, title tag, so we can't see it right on the page, but we still need it. So, and yeah, another layer, like another piece, <coughs> will be like utilities or particles. Yeah.
Anything else? Okay, so thank you everyone.